Good morning. Um, thank you for being here. We are delighted that uh, the hands-free bill will be on the House floor today. Minnesotans deserve to be safe on our roadways, and with distracted driving crashes and fatalities on the rise, it's time for us to pass a hands-free bill. There's clear evidence from other states that these types of laws save lives. We've heard so many heart-wrenching stories from Minnesotans about family members they've lost because people are on their smartphones instead of focusing on the road. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the Majority Leader, Ryan Winkler. Good morning. Uh, this is a common sense measure. Minnesotans expect to be safe on the roadways. They expect Minnesota to be a leader in roadway safety. The lives of our fellow citizens, our families, are far more important than one more text message or one more phone call with the holding onto the phone or one more piece of distracted driving. We all see it every day when we drive. Probably many of us are more guilty of it than we wish we would be. And it is time that we move in a different direction. This morning, I asked, my kids asked what I would be doing today. And I said, we were going to pass a distracted driving bill. And they said, you mean that's not the law already? It's about time, Dad. I think we all recognize that. Uh, good morning. My name is Frank Hornstein. I represent the district in Minneapolis, District 61A. I'm the chair of the Transportation uh, Finance and Policy Division and author of House File 50, which we're going to be hearing on the floor today. And I would concur with the comments of the speaker and the majority leader. We know this bill saves lives. In the uh, 16 other states and District of Columbia where this uh, bill has been enacted, there's been an average of a 16% drop in fatalities. And so we rarely have an opportunity uh, to uh, pass legislation with such a direct correlation uh, with the saving of a life and reduction in, in fatalities and injuries on the roadways. We have that opportunity today. Um, we would not be at this place uh, hearing this bill on the House floor for the first time after many other attempts. Uh, uh, this bill has died in committee or it's passed committees like it did last year but never came up on the House floor. We wouldn't be here today if not for the support of many, many uh, people in the community and throughout the state. And we will hear now from a couple of those main supporters, uh, primarily the families, the families of those who have lost their lives on, on our roads. Um, they are here and they have been here from the start at every committee meeting, at every press conference, because for them, this is the way to honor their loved ones, to make sure that no other Minnesotan has to go through what they have gone through. So they are here. They have, uh, their advocacy has been so absolutely critical to changing minds here at the legislature. So we're going to hear from them, and then we're going to conclude with comments from John Hausladen from the Minnesota Truckers Association. Again, we wouldn't be here without the support of many business and civic organizations, 34 of which have come out publicly for this legislation. We'll conclude with him and take your questions. I'd now like to call on V.J. Dixit, uh, whose daughter Shreya uh, was killed by a distracted driver. And he has been one of the main stalwart advocates among these many families that have been here time and time again. Mr. Dixit. Thank you, Representative. Thank you, George Leader, and thank you, uh, Speaker. It is so unusual that every few weeks we are here, and I'm here again. And why I get this opportunity? Because I'm a, I'm a senior citizen of these grieving parents, brothers, sisters. My daughter was killed in 2007. Since that time, more than 4,000, close to 5,000 more have died on the roads in Minnesota. And that is why I always like to give you data. This is my daughter. This is the face of that person who I'm grieving for. But what caused her fatality was an action by another teenager. No fault of hers. It was just a fault of an action that she took. Just to get back to what has been happening for the last 11 years, in 2007, 510 lost on the Minnesota roads. We have a few more 
2014, we started to do a lot of work. We lost only about maybe three, 361. Then it started to pop up. 2015, 411. 380 last year. As if it never ends, I have another data thanks to Office of Traffic Safety. Last year, on March 18, we had lost 48. Today is March 18, 2019. We have already reached 59. March 18, 2018, 48. March 18, 2019, 59. We need to do something, and I have a message for all our legislatures. Please, please wake up. It happens to anyone. Happened to me, happened to many of my friends, and it happened to you if you don't take any action. I don't want you to suffer what we have suffered. Now, of course, my friends, Karen. So my name is Karen Ilk. I'm from New Prague, Minnesota. Thank you very much. Um, VJ, thank you for your comments and your data. Uh, he is the most senior member. I am one of the newer members. My husband, Philip Bilk, was killed by a 16-year-old who focused in on the device more than the right to be on the road. And that's what it is. It's not even a right, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to be on the road. And she did not take that seriously. He was struck by behind. His skull was uh, shattered. Um, Minnesota Highway Patrol asked me not to see him. I was one who did not see my husband. Um, so now my family, my friends, and his family and his friends go through grief, anguish, sadness, and now forgiveness in order to make sure that this does not happen again. This is his bike that he was uh, riding. Um, I decided it was better not to just put it into a garage. Um, no museum piece is needed for this. What I've been doing is I've actually been cutting up his bike. And for any and every 16-year-old, of which I have one, a 16-year-old on the roads today, I am trying to give one of these to them as a reminder not to text and drive. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking this to legislation. It, the time is now for us to get this going and to have this as law. Thank you. I'm Nancy Johnson, and I represent Minnesotans for Safe Driving, and we have been trying to have working on traffic safety for over 20 years. And we believe this is the first step to get the public to realize that we don't do anything but drive. Distracting, distracted driving with phones are bad, distracted driving with a lot of other things, but we need to get the public to realize we can't do anything more than just drive. And this is a very good start to that. Thank you. Good morning, I'm John Hauslauden, president of the Minnesota Trucking Association. The business community stands united uh, in passing this bill today, and we believe it's going to happen. The public supports it through surveys and data. We know that the public is tired of distracted driving, and this is one of the tools that we can use to deal with it. The trucking industry supports it, and frankly, there are no excuses. We've been operating in a hands-free mode for years. We still can get the job done safely, on time. All the excuses of what it might uh, hinder are really not there. And we know that we have bipartisan support. There has been a tremendous coalition, and we think today is the day that hands-free cell phone use will pass in the Minnesota House. Thank you. My name is John Dudley. This is my son, Andrew. 
April 25th, 2012, I got the phone call at 8.40 in the evening that no parent wants to get. He was five weeks from graduating high school at St. Louis Park, and I've been doing what I can to bring awareness to this because, you know, my background is manufacturing, which safety is a big issue when you're on a production floor. And since 1976, I've had a commercial license and in between jobs and manufacturing, I've driven school bus. And with the increase in population in the Twin Cities and the more aggressive driving, and then now with the advent of this thing, it's become a selfish entitlement mentality that I can do, I can text and talk on the phone and I can drive at the same time. No, I wrote an article about doing just that. If you look up the Smith system, and you follow all the bullet points there on the internet, you can't, it's impossible to keep your mind on the road and do what you need to to drive full time. Um, and, and when I would uh, give a PowerPoint presentation for Minnesotans for Safe Driving at their impact groups, I would end my presentation with talking to the parents of new student drivers and people who are court ordered to be there. So you go home, you hug your kids often, and you tell them how much you love them because I can't do that with Andrew anymore. Thank you. So we'd be happy to uh, take any questions. Has the bill changed much as it's going through committees? Can you catch us up to what the main features are now? Um, the bill uh, has not changed much. We did add in uh, the Public Safety Committee a uh, traffic stop study. Uh, there were some concerns about uh, potential, you know, profiling, uh, and this is just a study that uh, the legislature has done in the past. Uh, and, uh, was authorized initially in uh, 2001, and data is from 2003, so we want to update it. Um, we also have um, a one-touch activation. Uh, that was added in a, a delete all amendment in the transportation committee. But outside of that, the bill is pretty much the same as it was when introduced. So the Senate version we've heard contains an exception for map apps. Is this correct or is that? Well, I think, you know, I'm not 100% familiar with what the Senate has done. I do know that there's some concern about some. Uh, some differences that we have with regard to GPS, um, and we strongly believe, and the safety advocates here believe that the one-touch activation is the uh, the safest way to address the GPS issue. So people can still use their GPS under our legislation, but it's really only under the one-touch activation mode. So uh, my understanding is that the Senate does not have that, uh, but you know any differences we'll iron out in the conference committee. Can you can you clarify the difference between a a Garmin type GPS device versus the GPS app on the phone. That's what I'm trying to get to. We'll have the uh, Minnesota Safety Council address that. Hello, my name is Lisa Kahns with the Minnesota Safety Council. I'm the Traffic Safety Program Manager there. And the difference between a Garmin is that is something that you can set on your dashboard and not touch once you've keyed in those um, applications that you want to go. With your phone on your hand or your Google Maps, the theory with this bill is the same, that you'll key in that and then you'll set it down or set it aside or mount it and then not touch it again unless it's in a hands-free mode. And so those are the difference. The technology that's built into your vehicle, it's the same way in this bill. So you can't be, you can't be digitally with your digits. <laughs> no, you can't be manipulating your phone and tapping in your locations or your coordinates <clears throat> while you're moving. It's set it and go, or use your hands-free mechanism and talk to it and go, but it needs to be next to you, mounted, or away and out of your hand. Thank you. So your you can still voice trigger? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely in a hands-free mode. Any applications? Okay. Thank Members you. Representative Hornstein, I think you know where I'm, what I'm going to ask you about. You're one of the few people who actually acknowledges that hands-free is not risk-free, that there is a very close correlation between any phone conversation and danger. First off, do you fear that you send a message with bills like this that hands-free is, in fact, safe? And secondly, how would the state counter that through some sort of public information uh, effort uh, that, in fact, any call made by a driver is unsafe? Well, you're correct, and, uh, and we have emphasized throughout mm -hmm. this project that um, hands-free is not distraction-free. Uh, and uh, we believe this is a, a major step forward uh, because the data does indicate uh, through numerous studies that fatalities uh, and injuries will be reduced. But, um, you know, really the bottom line is hang up and drive, don't use your phone, uh, two hands on the wheel, concentrate, 
Uh, this is, uh, as was mentioned, I, I think so articulately before, this is a privilege. And so when you're hurtling down a freeway uh, at 60 miles an hour, you have got to pay attention. So um, uh, this is, a, I think, an important step towards safety. Um, and we will be uh, the 18th state um, plus the District of Columbia to pass something like this. Uh, we know it works in other states. Uh, but the Department of Public Safety has been very, very clear, and, and many of these business groups, I think, that are behind us have been very, very clear that, that any distraction should be avoided. Are you that this will get ironed out in conference committee? This was the fastest moving piece of legislation, and how are you working with your Senate counterpart to get this all the way through to the governor's desk? Uh, thank you, Mary. Uh, Senator Newman and I have been in very close contact. Um, we uh, are very confident that um, we're both very, very committed to, to getting this passed. Uh, the governor has indicated he will sign it. And so, uh, you know, we do have some differences that will need to be ironed out. And, and I'm, again, because of our working relationship and because of our strong commitment to getting this done, uh, I, I'm confident we can do that. And it won't be a protracted uh, conference committee process. Are penalties one of those differences? Um, no, both bills uh, do not have penalties. No. Uh, the Senate has separate legislation that's been moving through uh, the Senate that does have increased penalties for texting, uh, but uh, there has been legislation introduced on, on the House side, which we may hear, uh, but that is um, uh, completely separate. This is a prevention approach, uh, you know, rather than, uh, you know, focusing on the penalties. And we know that this prevention approach does work. Uh, we did raise penalties. I authored that bill several years ago. Uh, I mean, raising them more may have some marginal uh, help, but, but we know this is where the deaths and injuries will be prevented. And this isn't going to magically disappear like it did last year? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we have a floor vote scheduled for today. So, um, you know, this is, this is a, uh, a bill that I think is high priority for many members. Uh, and others, and, and again, for all these people. And I'm um, very, very pleased with the progress we've made and the support we have. Senator Newman told me late last week that there were just a number of senators who did not want this bill if it didn't have that GPS exemption in it. So for you or the speaker or the majority leader, is it just the reality that that exemption is going to be in the final version in order to get it through the Senate? Well, I think it's... We haven't sat down and talked about it in the context of a conference committee. And, um, you know, a conference committee is open. It's transparent. We will take public testimony uh, and, uh, and then negotiate. So, um, you know, I, I, I can't predict, again, what would happen. But, again, once a bill is in a conference committee, I think that, uh, and there's a commitment on the authors from, uh, in the House and Senate to get it done, you know, I'm confident we'll work out our differences. Got time for two more questions. One of the concerns of uh, some of the lawmakers in the committee was that the bill in some ways is discriminatory against folks in parts of the state that don't have access to the technology to be hands-free. How much of a concern is that for you, and does your bill address that? Well, um, you know, I can also have the Safety Council and, and, and others uh, address this, but um, that concern has been raised, but um, people can, um, even in older model cars, uh, by uh, adapters, you know, cables, um, you know, the uh, something to affix the phone on the dashboard. And I checked yesterday on uh, uh, Amazon and uh, and Target.com, and and the price was anywhere from nine to twenty nine dollars, uh, depending on what you have. So, um, you know, we're again there. There will be a, a small segment of the the population that is affected, but um, I think that's a very small price to pay for safety. Uh, I don't know if the safety counts. Okay. So um, it that has been raised, but I, I don't think that should at all be a pediment, impediment to passing this bill. Final question? Again, why is this passing this year and it couldn't last year? <laughs> um, I think I, I'll, I'll, I, I, will, I will have the speaker address that question. It's my understanding last year in the House Republican Caucus that they had 54 members who supported it um, in the Minnesota House of Representatives, and their determination, my understanding is that they were not bringing a bill to the floor unless they had 68 Republican votes to pass it. This is a bipartisan effort, and this is a bill that will have support, I suspect, on both sides of the aisle, but I would also venture to guess we'd likely have 68 Democratic votes. So if, if that were our standard, it would meet it. 
but it doesn't need to meet that standard because of the importance of this issue and that far too many lives have been lost already to make it an issue that you can only bring to the floor if your team has the votes alone to pass it. But in theory, there were enough votes last There were year. enough, but there weren't enough Republican votes. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.